us say amen. Amen. John's chapter 15. He says this. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servants know it not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father. I have made known unto you. Uh, New Living Translation says it this way. It says, I no longer call you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servant. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. And that's, that's, that's the scripture he took me to on that way. He said, look, there's something <coughs> you need to know. And then he carries us to 2 Corinthians. Amen. Chapter 2. Verse 11. <laughs> Said this. It says, let Satan to get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant <laughs> of his devices. <laughs> so, you, so you see how it go? There's something I need you to know. <laughs> you need to know it. Because uh, if you don't know it, then Satan will try to take advantage of you. But if you know it, he can't because you know about his devices. So he said, yeah, it's something I need you to know. <laughs> and that's, that's where he took us, amen. And, and, and from there, uh, he, he, he took us to this, amen. Uh, it's about discussion. This is going to be the topic we're going to deal with this morning. It's something you need to know. And that something is, said, don't be incarcerated. <laughs> now, now, he took me back to this. He gave me this, whoo, that, that long time ago. Uh, the thing said, you don't want to be incarcerated. Don't be incarcerated. Not only that, uh, he's going to tell us some things about that. And when you think about incarcerated, uh, that simply means you've been in prison. That means you've been locked up. It means you've been caged. You've been confined. Uh, and so, well, the Lord said, well, I said, well, all of us in here say right now, I'm not incarcerated. I'm not locked up. I'm not caged up. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not confined. I'm free. But then, he took us to this. <laughs> Technical person. There are different things that can incarcerate you. You say this, just because you're not locked up, don't mean you're not locked in. Just because you're not behind bars, don't mean the bars aren't around you. Just because you're not in a cage, don't mean you ain't caged up. And how do we know this? God shows it to us even today. You have a lot of people that have gone to prison. They're serving a sentence. Been convicted. But you see them walking around. Know how you know they've been convicted? Know how you know they're serving a prison sentence? Lift up their ankle. And look at their ankle. They got an ankle bracelet on. That ankle bracelet limits them to where they can go. Some have ankle braces on that they can't. If they step across the threshold of the house, that blank, that thing goes off at the prison, and somebody will call them on the phone and say, where you think you're going? You don't have to be behind bars to be locked up. You don't have to be enclosed to be in jail. You can be in jail and not have a bar around you. It can be an invisible bar, and you don't even know you're locked up. And that's what the Lord letting us know today. There are many people walking around today, they locked up and don't even know it. They'll tell you, no, I'm free as I want to be. No, you're not free. You're incarcerated. You're in prison and don't even know it. 
And that's the thing that God had to fix for us because after Adam and Eve were disobedient, man was incarcerated from that point on. And so until you go to the point, you say, well, you go to Jesus and say, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior and Master. Until you do that, you locked up and don't even know it. You're enslaved to everything that you do, everything that goes in your life. You're in prison and don't even know it. But if you tell a, a sinner this, if you tell him that you're in prison, man, I'm free. I do whatever I want to do. You, 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 people in prison do what they want to do too. <laughs> but it's not whatever they want to do. They're being directed by somebody else. Now that's the thing a lot of times the young folk we need to try, we try to tell them this. You have your freedom outside. But yet you say, I don't want nobody telling me what to do. I want to be free. I don't want my daddy telling me what to do. Daddy don't tell me. Mama don't tell me what to do. I don't need no teachers telling me what to do. But yet you go on the street, go on the schoolyard, and what happened? One of your so-called friends come to you. Man, why don't you do this? You're free, but yet you're in prison to follow what he tells you to do. Then after you get in trouble, you go to a very place that everything that you have to do when you go to prison, they tell you when to get up, they tell you when to eat. They tell you when to go out on, you notice, when to go out on the yard for your break. When it's time to go back in and eat. When it's time to go to bed. And they always use that term, lockdown. But you can be in lockdown and there's not a bar around you. Show you this. We talked about this with the wife and the daughter. Things that incarcerate us, we don't even know it. And we can be incarcerated by it. Biggest thing is they cell phone. Now, now look at the one word that they use. And we and the, the devil not shrewd about this stuff. He, he in your face with it. Remember how you know he in your face? What he said about Job. He told God, I'll make Job cuss you to your face. The very word he uses tells us that if you get hooked on it, you're incarcerated. What is it? A cell phone. What are cells associated with? Prisons. When you go to jail, what do they do? They put you in a jail cell. <laughs> when you go to prison, they put you in a prison cell. What do you see most of us doing? We got our head down right now. We incarcerated, don't even know it. Get to the point, can't do it out. Well, up, did you lose it? Oh, I, 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 my phone, I can't do nothing. Constantly looking. Constantly got to keep it in their hand all the time. Get to say, well, Pastor, you got one on right now. I got it on, but it ain't on. Ask me the number. I don't even know it. You know who have to tell me what the number is? I have to go to the lady <clears throat> right there <clears throat> and tell her, what's, what's the phone number? She knows it, but I don't know it because she calls me. Other than that, if it don't rain, I don't use it. The thing about a cell phone, y'all know how a cell phone works? It works on a cellular, now, now, now listen to what I'm saying now. It works on a cellular tower. Now, the, the, so let's see, the devil's right in your face with it. And it's called a tower. Everything bounces off those towers. Every cellular tower sends a signal. The very thing that got man in trouble and the reason why we got scattered in the first place. In Genesis, when we decided we're going to all get together and decided we're going to build us a tower so we can get to heaven. So we don't need God to get there. We're we going to do it ourselves. We're going to build a tower and get to heaven. And so God ain't got nothing to do with it. And what do they send signals off of? Towers. What do we use for the cell phone for? A lot of times we call. The big thing right now is what? Text messaging. What do we call scriptures? And when we teach a sermon, what do we say we bring into you? We're bringing you a message, and we're speaking from this text. <laughs> it 
he, so he, you see how Satan works? He's taking the things, and he, that's what he does. He takes the things that God has allowed man to create, which are good, but he takes them and goes to the extreme with it. It makes you start, like you said, worshiping the things that have been created instead of the creator. Other thing, getting our kids with this. Now, look, I said, look at this. What's the one of the favorite games the kids like? Xbox. When you put something in a box, what do you do? You contain it. That means it can only go in the area within that box. It can't go any further than that box. And so what happens? You put that box mm, in front of the television. The child's looking at the TV set. They got the device, and they're looking at that box, and they, they focus is right there. If you say anything to them, they don't hear you. They, incarcerated don't even know it. You have more grown-ups, especially grown men, playing Xbox than you do children. <laughs> Some of them won't go to work because I, I, I can't go to work. <laughs> I'm a, I call in, I'm sick today. Sick, but he at home. What's that I hear in the background? <laughs> the other thing, other games, what do they call them? Playstations. What does God say he's going to do and wants us to be done? He wants to station us, but we're on a solid foundation, right? But what do they call it? Playstation. So what do the kids do? They station themselves at the house, but they aren't stationing themselves. Tell them to go to church. I want, I want to stay on my PlayStation. I'm, I'm at the ninth level right now. Not picking on y'all children too now, but when we came up, our game wasn't sophisticated, but we had them. That, that's a good one. A, a young man had a scholarship at LSU years ago. Had come from Redemptorist High School. Had a scholarship to play basketball. Know why he got kicked off the team? He was addicted to Pac-Man. Seriously, instead of going to class, he played Pac-Man. Instead of going, to, he started missing practice because he was addicted to Pac-Man. He got kicked off of the team because of Pac-Man. Incarcerated, not even locked up. The other addiction you're looking at, you're incarcerated by addiction. That's what an addiction is. If you hooked on a drug, you're in, you in prison. If you hooked on gambling, you're in prison. If you hooked on drama, you're in prison. What was it back in the day? A lot of us, the, what the folks used to say, the ladies used to say this, the stories. If one of them stories that comes on at 4 o'clock in this area is on, don't call the house. Young. <laughs> Don't call the house. I don't even remember this. My daddy, one of the things, and her daddy used to have the thing, look, my story going to be on at 2 o'clock on campus at Southern University at LSU. You had students who would not schedule their classes at 2, from between 2 to 4 o'clock because they didn't want to miss the bold and the beautiful. They wanted to see General Hospital. They wanted to see One Life to Live. And my goodness, they had to see the young and the restless. Incarcerated. They give up school. They give up knowledge for this addiction. What's the addiction right now? Reality TV. And it's not real. Know what else you're addicted to? Dysfunction. I always remember telling the folks, I would tell folks this at work, I tell folks this, I say, you know what? We in a system right now, in a government right now, where abnormal is normal. Normal don't make sense. If it makes sense, I can't do it. <laughs> but if it's stupid and coming all the way out, just way off my feet, oh, that, that's the best idea I've heard in a long time. But they locked into it and they're in prison and don't know it. And things can be going downward and spiraling downward because they're caught up in dysfunction. They don't know what, what it takes to do things right. They get caught up in things going bad for so long. When something good comes along, the devil tells them this. <laughs> you, 
you, you, you, you're not even good enough for that. You, you need to stay where you at. There have been relationships when people have been, have been gotten out of bad relationships and have somebody that, that treats them the way they should be treated. And they'll go back, well, why are you? I can't stay with you because you, you're too good for me. <laughs> so what you going to do? Well, I'm going to go back to what I'm used to, dysfunction. So they go right back to, go back again, and they come up to you. Well, what's wrong now? I probably should have stayed because I went back. He's not treating me right, or she's not treating me right. Dysfunction. That's all they know. They're incarcerated. They're imprisoned by it. The other thing we get incarcerated by, words. <laughs> words have gotten more people in lockdown and lock up and locked out than anything in this world. <laughs> what the pastor used to say, the Bible even says it, the tongue is the one thing that cannot be controlled. Man has difficulty controlling the tongue. But the Bible says when we speak a sweet word, it goes a long way. You speak in anger, all it does When you stir up strife, what happens? You think you're free, <laughs> but whether you believe it or not, you're on lockdown. You're in prison. You're incarcerated. Your words can get you locked up and, not, and you not even know it. It can get you put out of places and you not even realize why you're getting put out. And a lot of times what people will, will say, they'll come and say, well, well what did I do? It's <laughs> not what you did, it's what you said. <laughs> All of these things incarcerate us. They get you caged. They get you contained. And the Lord wants us to know, he says, in the word he tells us to say things in a compassionate way. The one thing the Bible always did when it talked about Jesus and the way he treated everybody, regardless of whether they were Pharisee, Sadducee, Roman, scribe, didn't matter, sinner. The first thing the Bible said he said he looked upon them with compassion. And it always said everything that he did, his power would be in his words. That's what the Bible said. And that's exactly what Jesus did, even on the cross. That's why I said he didn't have to punch Satan. He didn't have to lift a finger. Because the Bible already said he was going to defeat him with his tongue. And it started when he went in, in the wilderness. What did he do? Satan came at him to tempt him. He didn't, come on, let's, let, let, come on. We, he just said, it is written. The word is the reason why Jesus was able to be free. The word can set you free. When you have the word, you aren't imprisoned anymore. That's why the Bible said, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. They don't know. And because they don't know, they are boxed in, they're burdened, they're constricted. They can't get out of what they can't, they need to get out of if they only use the word. But that's what it is. We have the word. The reason why we give it is so that when the time comes and you need it, that, that's, you'll have the word, and the word will set you free out of every situation. The devil can't back you in a corner when you know the word. He can't do it. When you say it's written, and oh Lord, here we go. You notice it. And even when we go out places, whenever you speak to somebody, and if you mention, well, what? Well, I went to church. So they, they go away from it. And not knowing what it is because they're a prisoner to the ways of the world. And once you become a prisoner to the world, you're dead. You're in lockdown. You got a death sentence on your life already. You're just waiting to be, <laughs> you're just waiting to be executed. Literally. You're on death row. Thank you, Jesus. You're on death row and don't even know it. 
You're walking around, you know you're on death row. What you talking about? I'm on death row. You're on death row. And you're just waiting to be executed when the time comes. Don't be incarcerated. Don't get on lockdown. Don't get caged in. Don't get contained in. Because that's not what God wants you to do. That's not, he, not how he wants you to be. He said, well, the son, whoever the son is set free, is free indeed. It says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That means there's freedom. The spirit of the Lord is not contained and locked up in a box. The Holy Ghost goes wherever God directs the Holy Ghost to go. That's how it's set up. And one thing we got to let you know about this, and the Lord has given us this, and we're going to let you go. Turn to Hebrews chapter 10. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. <laughs> yeah, Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to look at verses 25. Yeah, I'm going to go to 29. Verses 25 through 29. I have to say amen. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. It says, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back is drawing near. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received the full knowledge of the truth, there is no other sacrifice that will cover these sins. Know what that says? You said you can confess Christ in your life, and you're a Christian, but yet you're doing not only the same thing that you did before you accepted him, but you're sinning worse now <laughs> than you did before you accepted him. And when you do it, you're doing it on purpose, and you know you're doing it. But you're doing it saying, well, Jesus died for me. He died for my sin. You're saying when you sin willfully, and you start saying, well, Jesus died for my sin, so he, that gives me the right to sin as much as I want. He said, even the blood of Jesus don't cover you. It don't cover that. It don't cover that. A lot of folks are out there. That's what Paul had to say. Grace, the grace of God, the gift of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ is not justification. It's not a green light to sin. Grace is not a green light to sin. And you have some folks saying, well, it's all right for me to sin because I said I, I accepted Jesus. Well, if you accepted him, you wouldn't sin. How do we know that? Because when he talked to the, 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 the woman that was caught in adultery, whenever he talked to someone who had been caught in sin, you know what he told them? He said, go and sin no more. He didn't say, okay, keep on doing what you're doing. I got you covered. It's just like an insurance policy. If you don't have the right policy and you get in the wrong accident and you try to make a claim, you know what they're going to tell you? <laughs> we don't cover that. <laughs> and so when you sin willfully, knowing you're sinning, and you're saying, yeah, but Jesus died. Yeah, Jesus died for sin, but that blood don't cover you because you're not under the blood. You're not under warranty. <laughs> you're walking on your own. You're uncovered. And he says this. 
There will be nothing to look forward to but the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. Anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Think how much more terrible the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant as if it were common and unholy. Such people have insulted and enraged the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to his people. Remember they say, don't grieve the Holy Ghost? In other words, don't get the Holy Ghost mad. And then we're going to leave you with this. Turn to Galatians. Chapter 5 <coughs> and verse 1. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. And when you have it, say amen. And if you don't have it, say hold on. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. And you know what it says? And basically what we're saying on the last item on the screen. Don't be incarcerated. It says this, the New King James Version says, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And the New Living Translation says this, so Christ has really set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. What do they always tell the prisoners when they get out of prison? Don't come back here. <laughs> you're out now, you're free. Stay free. Don't come back. Don't do anything else to send yourself back here. And so he says, I got you out of your incarceration. I got you out of the prison. I freed you from that. You're not in the cage no more. You're not in the box anymore. Don't go back to it. You're free now. Stay free. Stay free. Don't get locked up because, like I said, you don't have to go to prison to get locked up. You can be locked up in your own little old world. A lot of times when people say they, they locked up in their mind. And that's where the devil plays games with people. He gets in the mind and he can incarcerate you right there in your head. And get a person to the point you have people, they won't even leave their room. They lock themselves up in a prison. It was sad for a while. Michael Jackson did that, remember? For a long time he actually bought a bubble and put himself in a bubble because he didn't want to get germs from the world. Whenever he traveled, he traveled remember that for a long time, he wore a mask. And everybody said, well, what's wrong with him? He didn't want to breathe in anything that would contaminate his body, mind, incarcerated, imprisoned in his own mind. Don't be incarcerated. What does the Bible say? The Lord is not giving you the spirit of fear, but of, sound, of a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. Don't jail yourself up. The Lord said, I set you free. Stay free. That's it, children. Stay free. Don't give up what God has given you through his son. Don't step on the blood. Don't step on Jesus. Don't treat him like he unholy. Because I say, Sister Young, we see more and more now. See this? You see young people walking with crosses on their shirts, crosses around their neck, crosses on their back, crosses in their teeth, crosses on their hand, crosses tattooed on their body. But they ain't living nothing like Jesus. But they think by having that, that they're covered, that they're okay. This is not a vampire movie. 
where you take a cross and hold it in front of a vampire and you start screaming. It don't work that way. You have to stay under the blood. Once, when you're under the blood, you're free to do God's will. You're free to do God's will. Amen. Whatever aligns with his purpose, that you do. If it don't align with his purpose, I, I, and if somebody, it's an old expression, the kids don't know this one. Someone going to remember it, though. If somebody try to get you to do something that's going to get you incarcerated, not just uh, physical incarceration, but spiritual incarceration, it'd be like, we used to say, homie, don't play that. Homie, don't play that. And leave it alone. Amen. Amen.